Blessed love, blessed love. This is my family right here, and we're giving thanks on the Sabbath day. All glory to the Most High, King of Creation, rule over the earth, sky, and sea. Doni I Gaja, Rastafari. Blessed, blessed. So yeah, give thanks and praise. You know, I wanted to give thanks for for so many things. One of the things is Prince Ramaya is coming to Jamaica uh, right now. It's a very special and commemorative moment. And it also brought to light, you know, the importance of one's understanding why we hail King Celestia as God and King. And I wanted the youth around so that we can make it real simple and we can have fun with it and we can be ourselves. And if there's questions, you guys can ask questions. And we're gonna approach this in a manner because we've I've, I've reasoned on this a lot and there's different ways of reasoning. And I want to make it so that it's a joyful experience and that it's an understanding of oneness. We've got a lot more children in the room than you can see. All glory to the Most High. That stuff, all right. So, you know, I'm going to be real, real because I want it to make an impact. All right. And the way that, you know, Christ spoke, it was able to cut through just like the way Vaughn spoke is because it was a little uncomfortable. You know, but yet it also was enlightenedly uh, beautiful in its enlightening abilities. That these things brought to you the joy which brought to you the feeling and the feeling of God. And that's what I want everybody really to feel. Because God is everything and everywhere all the time. So we're going to go into that. And that's where we're going to start in a lot of ways is God is everything. Most High is everything. Everything is the most high. And that's because God is one. God is one with all. Alright, so these are basic principles of oneness that in a lot of ways that we have to begin with. You know? So in the beginning, God was one. You know? Before a word was spoken, God was one. Now that oneness is a continuity. That oneness is so solid that you cannot break it into pieces. And we will talk about the Trinity. And again, we were reasoning earlier with Naya about what is, you know, the different elements of the Trinity. You know, how you have your body, you have your mind, and then you have your soul. You know, you've got water, which is the essence of ourselves. And it's very important because the Most High's relationship with water and our experience here on earth is also interwoven so the very nature of looking at water and saying okay the way of explaining the father the son and the holy spirit that i like using is showing that steam is representative of, of the holy spirit because you cannot see it but it's very real you know if you can steam up a room and literally make people pass out you know the spirit is the same way you know and then you've got ice which is like I and I, the humans, the body, Christ, you know, and the very nature of the God-man, that's solid. That's something you can touch. That's something for you to actually hold, you know? Now, then you got water, liquid water, which is the essence of the other two, but yet looks different, and you can't hold it. But yet you are it. <laughs> This is the nature of God. That's the essence of God. You know, and that's why water is so important because again, it's like you cannot live without it. You know, the very nature of what is God, God is love, liquid love, you know, that has filled up the entire multiverses. So the nature of this, of looking at the power of what creates and even how it relates to us in a manner which is tangible. So we're talking about this in a tangible manner as water so that we can understand, it, you know? And so that's why the nature of this oneness is clear. Everything on earth needs some water, right? So that's the thing is, is that when I say God is everything, you know, what we're really saying is God is everything living, all right? So if it was made by the hands of man, it is not alive, you know? And 
the oneness is where we're going to get to because next to the oneness is the love all right and that's why you hear rastafari say one love a lot all right because it's another way of saying one god because god is love so let us be love seven words of love the very nature of seeing that love in the heart something that is not like logical just like god is not logical in many manners it doesn't operate by the principles of logic of which you would see by man in his mathematical reason all right, if he operates in the logos, which is where the word logic comes from, which means wisdom. Now, without love, you don't have wisdom. You have knowledge, all right? So love is the fabric which actually makes all things uh, real. You know, that if you didn't love yourself, your heart wouldn't be beaten. And so love is actually a force beyond your control. Does that make sense, Jamal? Love is a force beyond your control. So the very nature of this force, this power, this is the power of oneness. This is the power of the Trinity. And so this is just the beginning though, of understanding oneness. All right, Because this is the nature of why Rastafari is so joyful. Is not only do we see the kingdom of heaven within, but we see the reign of his kingdom around. And it's something where we're seeing it in these days. We're seeing it as a fulfillment of prophecy, as an evolution of man. And this is why it's so special that we're here in this time and why his majesty came in this time. Because we have seen, you know, just to be honest, we've seen man go into such terrible places. We've seen the worst of men. But when we say who and where have we seen the best of men, you know? And where are those ones in the right position in the right time? Oh, these children of God. So now we're going to get into this where if everything is God, then why is it so scary for people to say, I am God? If the kingdom of heaven is within you, if God is in the heart of all flesh, which we are taught in the scriptures, these things here would tell, tell us that the Most High in His oneness is attainable in you. But you have to walk in the right way. Teach Him the way of Jah, not the way of men. So the very nature of this dichotomy this polarity that created in the Garden of Eden, that's the whole story of Adam and Eve, is this falling from grace in which now salvation was in the hand of God to bring to man in order to prove the devil wrong. To show I will not hate that which I love and I cannot love that which I hate. And man going astray goes right into that. But all of this is, you know, I'm trying to stay on a certain focus for you guys, right? Because I don't want to go off and I want to make sure that you guys really do understand what I'm saying, okay? So, because it's complicated. It's not easy to understand. Okay, you've got the Father, you've got the Son, and you've got the Holy Spirit, and now we've got the conquering Lion of Judah, all right? These are not easy things to, like, comprehend. Okay, the Lamb and the Lion, the Bride, the Bridegroom. And now, the conquering lion and the lamb are both representations of the one. Now, it's kind of cool having you guys here because when you guys go out there, you represent me, our house, our name, our teachings, our philosophies, what we've shown you to eat, how to dress, what to say, how to think, how to be kind. You know, if you go out there and, you, and you say mean things to people, they're going to think that this is what we teach you. You know, we have to show that we show that we understand the principles, the message of Christ, the message of his majesty are not only interwoven, but are correct. They're right because we know what's right within us. But it's up to us to see that evolution of guidance. You know, as sometimes people 
they will think certain things are true, but it's not the truth. You know? And that's why like we're here to bring things open into a bigger realm. We want people to understand why is not only God everything, why not only love is the force that runs the universe, all right? Because these are the precepts of pretty much every religion, all right? And we're not a religion. We are a people that are a fulfillment of prophecy. That's a different thing. It's one of those things where ready or not, here we come. We didn't choose a lot of us to become Rastafari. Most High came to us and said, you will call me by my name. And that is Haile Selassie. That's the power of the Trinity. Where His Majesty has come in visions, dreams, up to people, all kinds of different things. You know, so these are the things in which are very, very important to understand that. You know, a, a YouTube video or a speech or something of these natures, they're not going to change what God has told people. And when the Most High is shown in flesh that He is with you in flesh, not just within, but without, you know, because He's with the outside. It's not that He is empty, it's that He is so full, we are in Him. So this is why we have to really like just slow it down, okay? And that's why I want to make sure if you guys have any questions, do let me know because it is a little complicated, all right? And hopefully there's some verses that I, I was able to pull out that would help show a few things, all right? That kind of bring certain things to light, so... This is such a mystic revelation. Because, you know, it's Christ that teaches the most about His majesty. Ironically. And it's His majesty that wants you to learn about Christ. And it's because the levels of understanding, the first is the last, the, 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 the last is the first. What you do unto me, you do unto the Creator Himself. What you do unto the least of these, you do unto me. This is the back of the principles of really understanding oneness. You get it? That like literally what goes around comes around. You hurt them, you hurt me. And in this time of environmental inaction, this is a big problem. When people don't care about animals, the water, the earth. Like these things are now whether or not we live or die, whether or not we become extinct, is whether we re realize and remember what Christ spoke. But the least of these. So that's also part of the reason why it's like, why would God want to be a man? Why would God want to be with us? Why would we be a likeness and an image of the Creator? So it's like if flesh is so bad, why are why did God make it? Right? And it's a certain thing of understanding a set point of creator, creation. Now, just because you didn't create the flesh doesn't mean it wasn't created. And so the Most High wants to show you your voice is my voice. Your eyes are my eyes. Your immune system is my immune system. I make it operate. That's how God works. He's like, I got it under control, man. Don't worry. You know what I mean? You cut it, it will grow back. I got you. You know? So there's a certain amount of love you know, this is, this, is, this is the grace. You know, the salvation is when we have to realize, you know, that mankind is at a place where they should have never got. And they've been there for a long time. And it has a lot to do with talking the talk, not walking the walk. It has a lot to do with being scared of death at the end of it. So, naturally, if God is one, and we are one with God, and there is a nature of understanding in the beginning. And I want, I'm going to pull out John chapter 1 verse 1 in a minute. Where it shows, you know, and it's interesting because these aren't the words of Christ, but they are the most beautiful words and so true. You know, let's pull it out. Let's pull it out. Rastafari. See, this is why Rastafari can reason and reason and reason. And you want, people want to know, what are we talking about? What are we doing? And it's like, you know what we're doing? We are reflecting on the joy, the love, 
that dwells around us and within us and in the heart of man and how that is like that that is that is you know that that's what what we're here to do life is for living life is for god life is for love so that is the essence of life that's the most important thing because without that what, what, what you got all right so john chapter one verse one in the beginning was the word and the word was with Jah. And the word was Jah. He was in the beginning with Jah. All came to be through him. And without him, not even one came to be that came to be. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't overcome it. There was a man sent from Jah. His name was Jah. This one came for a witness, to bear the witness of the light, that all might believe through him. So this is showing right here, so very, very, we could spend a lot of time on this one particular chapter, all right, so keep that in mind, I ain't trying to go too fast, but I want everyone to kind of get an overview of even why we're making this video, I could have written all of this, right, but the word spoken has a power, it has a power like no other, it has the ability to open eyes, it has the ability to change worlds and minds, you know, that the Most High gave us this word because the word in it is life and life everlasting. So the very nature of seeing that the word is Jah. So the very nature of Jah was in the beginning a word. And when he spoke this word, all things came to be. So understanding why it is that we look at this as in the beginning Jah was with us and that we were with him all came to be through him and without him not even one came to be that came to be that all of us came through him the very nature of god looking at himself as a man and then creating us through that and even through that experience of the christ bloodline of the david bloodline of the redemption bloodline, of an evolution of love and morality bloodline that would result eventually into a king that does not believe in classism. Where you now have a king that was born from a hut. You know, like who can we think of that was born in such a modest type of experience and yet will not venerate himself, but yet speaks of another, you know? There is, this is a, an image of the word of God is man, the word of man is God, that the love of each other is like the love of a bride and bridegroom, like the very much, even greater, you know, but the very nature of the way the lion and the lamb, in the beginning, as Christ saw himself as one of us, I'm sorry, as God saw himself as one of us, because the nature of understanding the differences between the Father and the Son are also important as well. And this is why we're going to get into some of that later. In fact, let's roll into it. Let's wrap right into it because, you know, that way we are keep things on a swiftness, you know? So, if we go to Revelations. Revelations chapter 3. And this is now before the announcement that the conquering lion has come. You know, because we can actually go and check in Matthew um, chapter 13, verse 37, where we'll actually see, in fact, we'll go here first. So, and this is interesting because there's a lot of people around that do not understand what he's saying. So... You know, we're gonna go a little bit, a little bit before we get to this, this, this particular part. All right. There we go. Another parable he put before them, saying, "The rain 
of the heavens has become like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while he slept, his enemies came and sowed Darna amongst the wheat and went away. Do you know what Darna means? It means weeds. Alright? So he's saying that the reign of the king, the reign of heaven, the reign of Zion, has become like a man that has sowed good seed, but while men slept, his enemy came and sowed weeds amongst the wheat and went away. And when the blade sprouted and bore fruit, then the weeds also appeared. So there's a nature of saying that the kingdom of heaven is like those who do good, but yet still are surrounded by that. Sounds like kind of like where we are. <laughs> Next. <laughs> All right. And the servant of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good field seed in your field? And from where does it have the weeds, the dharma? And he said to them, A man, an enemy did this. And the servant said to him, Do you wish then that we go and gather them up? He said, no, lest while you gather the dharma, you also uproot the wheat with them, that both grow together until harvest. And at the time of harvest, I shall say to the reapers, first gather the weeds and bind them up in bundles and burn them, but gather the wheat and put it in my granary. Another parable he put before them, saying, the rain of heaven is like a mustard seed in which a man took and sowed in his field. Understanding that is also a thing. He says so many parables here where he says the reign of heaven is like a man who sows. All right? Or who does this. So the understanding of God, the understanding of love is an action. It's a verb. You know? It's an understanding. We are here to do this. That's why it's a joy. You know? So the very nature of that reign, that kingdom of God, is like this, a man. Let's go, go right back to that. The rain of the heavens is like a mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is less than all the seeds. It's the smallest of all seeds. A mustard seed is smaller than a grain of grass. But when it is grown, it is greater than the plant and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the heavens come and dwell on its branches. So this is another one showing that, what is it? What is the reign of heaven? The reign of heaven is goodness in continuity. The reign of heaven is that little small, tiny little thing. And that's what man is. And so in the bigger circumference of why people are like, Man, how can you say how you lost your God? It's like, why? Oh, he just a man. Oh, he just a little, little man, huh? You'll see him refer to him as a little man all the time. Why, why you follow Christ? This, this, this homeless, you know, peasant from Palestine. Nothing good cometh from Nazareth. You know, this is what they said about it. You know? And it comes back to understanding how the first is the last. How in him he was in the beginning. And he is in the end. So let's go to uh, that Revelations because that goes straight into that, that interlink. And in that same... Oh, we didn't go... Man, we didn't skip, we didn't skip right over the part I was, I was trying to get to. You know, sorry about that. Alright, alright. I'm telling you, doing this is, is, is not the easiest thing. Alright. So we go to the number 37, Matthew 13. He says, In answering to them, He who is sowing the good seed is the son of Adam, or the son of man. Now it's mystic because the son of man is the Almighty. And it's a strange thing to see the Almighty being called the son of man, the son of Adam. But yet it's that understanding the same way. Just like the son of God you would automatically think is, you know, not worthy to be praised. 
because he's the son. He's not God, right? But understanding the Trinity is to understand how God is with us, God is around us, and God is above us. You dig? All right. So the very nature of why His Majesty is always showing a Christian etiquette is because He understands that I am here to take care of my children. My son is the example of an everlasting seed. It is the everlasting seed of continuity in which I am self-evident. I am that evidence. You know, and He doesn't have to prove it. He doesn't have to explain it. You know, the root of David says it. How can the seed of David be also a root? Think about it. This is the Trinity. When the past, the present, and the future are one. You hear? How tomorrow they shall be the root. How can the seed seed be the root? The same way your genetic structure and DNA will go straight back to that same everlastingness. A little forever you know, it's a uh, sequence. You'll see it in the plants. It's called the uh, Fibonacci sequence. You'll see it in all the rocks and lives and the DNA and all of these things when they, when it come down to the Y sequence, which is the power of the Trinity, which is Heidi Selassie. That's what that means, the power of the Trinity. So whenever you see the way that things grow like roots in a Y, you are seeing the power of the Trinity in an everlasting motion. Yeah. So he said to them, He who is sowing the good seed is the Son of Man, and the field is the world. And the good seed, these are the sons of the rain, sons of the king. But the weeds, the Darnell are the sons of the wicked one. And the enemy who has sowed them is the devil. And the harvest is at the end of the age. And the reapers are the messengers. The Darnell then is gathered and burned in the fire. So it shall be at the end of this age. The son of man, the son of Adam, shall send out his messengers. That's who we are, his messengers. And they shall gather out his reign. We shall gather out of his reign. We shall gather out of his kingdom all the stumbling blocks and all doing lawlessness and shall throw them into the furnace of the fire. And there shall be wailing and a gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous shall shine forth as the sun in the reign of their father. He who has ears to hear, let them hear. So that's him talking about the Son of Man, saying in that time, in the end of days. And that's why we're dealing with Revelation, because we know the times we're living in. It's one of those times where we're seeing the beginning of a new age and the end of the old age. That right now the fire coming down. That's why you always hear Rasta say, more fire, more fire. The fire have to burn out all the wickedness. You know, it's a pure fire, you know. And at the same place, you know, the Father moves in a way like water, you know, so there's a certain level of, again, a balance, and you'll see that over and over again, so. So, once again, now we're going to quickly flip to Revelations, and while we do that, I, I was just thinking about, you know, the power of that verb, behold, you know, it's not just like, check out, you know, it's not like, oh, by the way, the conquering lion of Judah. All right? No, behold. You know? Hold it. Be. Hold. The conquering lion of Judah. Don't let go. All right? Take a moment and really think about it. All right? Behold. The conquering lion of Judah has prevailed. He's already won. God has already seen this whole thing through. The book is done written. You know, His Majesty already knows. You know, there's a certain level of understanding this because this is a, a level of salvation. 
His Majesty knows Africa must be free. His Majesty knows that the first is the last and that we must unify as an earth in order to survive, that global problems take global solutions. His Majesty knows that slavery has to end all over. You know, His Majesty knows the names of all of those who are sick in the hospital. You know, His Majesty knows what pain is like and losing children. His Majesty knows what it's like having the whole world against you. You know, God knows. His Majesty knows. This is very, very rare. You can see a thing where you're going to see a parallel in such a way. It's last CI the first. Ja. Rastafari. All right. I'm getting excited, man. All right. So. This is something where I want also you to see. Because the whole nature of this story and the Christ meditation is where you fit in. Okay? It's not a story external of yourself. It's actually the story of yourself. And why is that? One is because might is not right. Alright? I'm not trying to be a poet. <laughs> might isn't right. Alright? Right, right. Just because you got more guns, more, more men, doesn't make you right. You know, and that's something we see, you know, from King David, from Isaiah, from Jeremiah, these warnings to these great empires, just like his majesty warned the great empires. And what happened? The rest as you know it shall be destroyed, he said. I say this prophetically and without, uh, with, without uh, spite, you know? Like these, these are the things that will happen. And His Majesty was already seen worldwide as a prophet because he predicted all the events that were going to come from the result of ignoring his plea. So the way in which we saw nations rise up, all of that was very much in the Bible. You know, so when we see things, you know, even the, like the way the birth was, you know, like it's, it's something where His Majesty's earth light is very significant. You know, not only is it written in Chronicles and is the rising of Sirius and the first day of the constellation of Leo, but it was also a day where he was born in a hut and it rained. You know, that when he came, he rained. When he came, waters came. And that water is critical in understanding, like, the essence. You know, why is the Nile River so important and why is it interlinked? into our biosystem, you know, if we all came out of Africa, of Ethiopia, then we all have this Nile River within us, you know, and the way the Nile River flows is remarkably similar as the blood flows from your heart to your brain, going up, the very nature of this is, is understanding our destiny of where we come from to where we're going, and it echoes even the way we were born inside of the womb as far as the heart is the first to be the organ to be created, you know, and out of the heart comes the head. Out of Ethiopia comes Egypt. Out of Ethiopia comes all things. Out of God comes all things. We start seeing this mirror I image and this mirror experience. So now we're going to go Revelations because I give thanks to the eyes time and, you know, we got some children all knock out, but you know, that's all right. Yeah, you know, getting in, getting in, the, in, in the third eye, you know, and that's what's important is for all of the eyes to realize. Okay, His Majesty's message and Christ's message is innately based in peace, peace, and that is something that the Earth needs. The Earth desperately deserves peace, and it's only because of the wicked one we don't have peace. We cannot be wicked to get peace. We cannot reward evil with evil. Lest hatred erode our souls. These are the words of the emperor. He reminds us in this modern day. From the highest throne. In the kingdom. Of the kingdom. From the kingdom. For the kingdom. And you have to decide whether you are a subject of the kingdom. 
whether or not you are a participant in Zion and Zion works and Zion thoughts, Zion joy, Zion children. Or you want to sit there and deal with the abstract of speculation based on, you know, absolutism, which has nothing behind it. His majesty is, you know, as the almighty breaks open a lot of these things, including what? God is everything, but not me. God is everything, but man. God is everything, but Hare Celeste. This is what they want to tell you, this type of, it don't make sense, man. God won, God won. What make his majesty stand on top? That is the question. And that's because he is the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah and the son of man. Because what you're seeing here is showing a greater power of that with I you are, when you are as Christ is through his love, through his mercy and grace and salvation and sacrifice. These are the essence of what brings down the integrity of a man. Will you bow to might is right? If someone put a gun in your face and say, yo, we want you to eat pig's feet, man. You know, you gonna say no, or you gonna say okay. You know, Christ would have said no. I don't eat them things. Maccabee said no, we go to war. You want me, you gonna put, what? You want me to bow down to your idol? War. And that's what bring down Greece. Nobody ever want to talk about what happened to Greece. What was the end of Greece? How did Rome start? They want to tell you about Romulus and Remus and some, some fallacy, bestiality story of some wolves. Like wolves start, started a, a, a nation. Nah. Maccabees. All because of that. Because the Greeks want to come in and say, bow. And Judas Maccabee is say, eh, eh. And it took three generations of the Maccabees slew it. Slew it. You know? So there's a certain time where there's a harvest time. You know? Right now we're in a period where it's prophetical. We are immersed in thoughts of the king. Immersed in the joy and the beauty of the continuation. Of the continuation of the Rasta man even. Because all religions are actually started by some guy with dreadlocks and a beard. You know? So... One way or another, Rasta, trust me, you know, especially Islam, you know. But the very nature of realizing, you know, that it's not the religion that's the point. It's the God in which is involved. And whether this God is one which you feel. Because that's really what it comes down to. That when it says that the kingdom of heaven is within, you know, this is, this is something in which... which you know, in, in uh, the scriptures I have from the South African Scripture Research Institute, uh, it, has, it has a different uh, int uh, quotation from there. Let me find it. I know it's... Uh, but basically, the, the concept of what, what uh, is being explained in this as far as the kingdom of, of God is within is a different uh, meditation. Uh, it says in Luke, that's where it is, Luke chapter 20, uh, 17, verse 21. They say, look, it's, it's, uh, we'll start with 20. And having asked by the Pharisees when the reign of Jah would come, he answered them and said, the reign of Jah does not come with intent watching. So you looking with your eyes will not see. That's not where it's coming from. Nor shall they say, look here or look there. For look, the reign of Jah is in your midst. So the King James Bible would say the kingdom of God is within you. Here it's saying the reign of Jah is in your midst. The reign of his majesty is in your midst. So, this is how you will know about the last days. It's not whether or not you see it, it's whether you feel it. And whether or not that feeling will lead you to seeing the kingdom of God is here on earth and that God is with us.
we saw, we hear it all the time from religious people, but the moment they're like, people are like serious about God is here with I right now. I can feel, I just want to jump for joy. It's not, that's why Rastafari different. You see how happy we are. If you don't get it. Hey, why are you so happy? Well, we're not waiting on no one. Everything has been given unto I. And with that all true Jah, we shall conquer. We are the messengers of the Son of Man. The messengers of the King of Kings. So, so with that, you know, I'm going to come to this last bit in Revelations to kind of bring forth a, con a continuity and understanding of that fulfillment. It says in the book of Revelations, in chapter 3, verse 21, To him who overcomes, I shall give to sit with me on my throne, and also, as also, as I also overcame, and sat down with my father on his throne. So this is uh, what, what the, the Spirit uh, spoke to John in the book of Revelations, revealing uh, what is uh, to come from uh, uh, from Christ and from the Father. And this is to say that from Christ, he says to him who overcomes, I shall give to him to sit with me. To him who overcomes, I shall give to sit with me. On my throne, also as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. This is a very interesting thing because what it shows is that not only like in other passages there are, there are many thrones, but this particular throne is the throne of the Lamb. This is the throne of God. As he sat with God, you shall sit with him. Not just sit with him, sit in his throne. This is a very powerful mantle. This is a powerful thing. It says right here, to him who will overcome. That's any of you, you know. Any of you. You will overcome. You will sit with Christ on his throne. So why is it out there to say that his majesty sit on the throne of King David, on the throne of Christ? When obviously he sits on the throne of Christ. That he sits on the throne of Zion. He sits on the throne of the Father. This is a whole other element. For, you know, in the Father is his Son. But yet he, he is the conquering lion. He is the fulfillment. He is the completion of the marriage of man and God. It says further that the 24 elders fell down before him who sits on the throne and bow before him who lives forever and ever. And they cast their crowns before the throne saying, You are worthy, O Jah, to receive the esteem, the respect, and the power for you have created all, and because of your desire they are and were created. This is important, for it says very carefully and clearly that we are here to uh, show that he is worthy of esteem, respect, and power. That the Trinity created all. That the power of the Trinity created all. So when we say Haile Selassie, we are saying the power of the Trinity. When we throw our, our, our uh, crowns uh, to His Majesty, to the throne, when we give our head to the throne, when we have His name written on our head, we are fulfilling that prophecy. We're, we are called by His name, you know? Like his name is written on our head. Rastafari, head, uh, creator worthy of reverence or fear. The head who is worthy of fear or reverence. It can be, it can be uh, translated in different ways. 
And right here, it says later in Revelations 5, 13, to him sitting on the throne and to the Lamb, be the blessing and the respect and the esteem and the might forever and ever. This is important in understanding, again, the separation, but yet the continuation of its unity, that the Lamb and, and, and He who sits on the throne. You notice that that's how they refer to Him, He who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. So this is why it's important to understand that there are two different personalities simultaneously enacting with each other in Revelations. That the Lamb is the Lamb, the Lion is the Lion, the Father is the Father, the Son is the Son. So, this is a short reasoning about why His Majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie, is the fulfillment and the embodiment of God in flesh on the throne of Zion. For we are also, as human beings, also the fulfillment of the embodiment of God in flesh. For the Most High dwelleth in the hearts of all flesh. Hallelujah. For without that, we wouldn't know love, we wouldn't know right, we wouldn't know wrong, we wouldn't even be able to say that's good or bad. Because it was already written in you, as it was written in this book. And as it was in the beginning, so it is now and forevermore. These are the words and the truths that are the life, that are the love. Yes, Lord. All glory to the Most High. They are the God. You know, one. You know, these are the things that bring all these focuses together of making sure that time and sequence are all in line. You know, and not just a consequence. So, anyway. I give thanks to the eyes listening. There's so much more I could reason on because, you know, this is the nature of the, the power of, of the joy. This is why Christ couldn't stop speaking because, again, when you see how great Jah is in his fullness, in his power and immensity, that he is not up in the sky, but he is there right there inside of you healing yourself like the woman who couldn't stop bleeding you know so it wasn't i that healed you it was you <laughs> your faith you know the mustard seed so never think you too small because it's all designed like that they killed christ because he said i am god you know and they didn't write it so in the same just blunt you know and that's why his majesty doesn't need to say these things you know, when he knows himself, you already know that I am all of you. I am all the planets. I am all of it. And what? You know, so are you. So are I. We, we are one here, you know. I don't need anything big to move through. He big enough to make everything small great enough for him. All right? Can I out? You know, can't go above Jah, you can't go below Jah, you can't get around Jah, that's just the way it works. You know, the Most High is faster than any man's mind can operate. You know, and from that word that was in the beginning, came forth and was through the darkness and brought forth water and the light. And in that power of the Trinity, life was created, and that's the same as they speak and teach in them science. So understanding why that... That one law of black power is the power of creation that brings forth all of I and I's, all humanity, all carbon-based life forms. That's the power in which is to, the, it, to understand itself, to become itself fully, to sit upon the throne of Zion and be back again in Ethiopia for the garden to be restored for the reign of the kingdom to start having the, 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 the cutting of, of the harvest. Yeah, that's the far eye. So give thanks and praises, you know. I pray that this was somewhat enlightening and to those, you know, who want to say to Rastafari, you don't, you know, you guys are crazy and the rest. You know, I think that um, they would be wise, you know, to listen to the emperor, you know. 
that to judge the faith of men is to judge the ways of God. That no man can really know these things, you know? That be aware that Jah works in mystic ways. And there are certain levels where you have both ignorance and righteousness sometimes dwelling together in every house. And that's the reason why scribes and Pharisees are created, because they think they're so perfect. So, the nature of humility and understanding the importance of the student, you know, teacher relationship. You know, that the student's student is the teacher and the teacher's teacher is the student. The master's master is the servant, the servant's servant is the master. Because without the little guy, the big guy don't get paid. That's how things move, right? Same thing all the way around. Whether it's spiritual or not, it's the same law. What you do to others is what you come back and to you. So we just want to say give thanks on the Sabbath day and all glory to the King of creation. Yes, I. All my springs are in thee, Jase. You know, all my springs are in thee. You know, you can't underestimate these things. That's a lot of springs. Yes, I. All you players and singers of instruments, children of Jah, your treasure. This is our treasure. Rastafari. Thank you all. Any questions? And I'll put happy you to see. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, do I see?